Gaming. It's a world where every move matters, every strategy counts, and every second can change the outcome. But what happens when someone bends the rules? Today, we're diving deep into the world of game cheating, how it works, why people do it, and why, despite the risks, it's still so tempting. So why are these cheats even made? Why do hackers and developers spend hours and hours crafting bots, mod menus, and hacks in general? The answer is money, and a lot of it. Let's say you play Valorant, and the cheats are 60 bucks a month. Valorant has about 15 million players, okay? If only 0.01% of the players buy your cheat, this is an easy 90k a month. Now let's start with the how. Cheats in games come in many forms, from basic aimbots to complex code. At the heart of the cheat, it manipulates the game's internal mechanics. You've probably heard of wall hacks, right? Where cheaters see opponents through walls. Or the aimbot systems that perfectly aim and shoot for you. How, how does it all happen? How does this work? Well, it's all about exploiting vulnerabilities in modern games, especially online ones. Cheats just simply manipulate the game's data, whether it's online, it's sent to a server, or it's local. Now let's talk about the types of cheats. First one, it's a simple one. It's a, it's a bot. It's a simple bot that can do something for hours and hours and hours without even tiring. Imagine you're playing Minecraft. You have an Enderman farm and you need to kill them constantly, but you don't want to blur pressing left click over and over again. What do you do? It's easy, use a bot that will do the clicking for you and you come back to a full inventory. Easy at that. Bots can also be reactive. How, you may ask? Well, let's say you have a health bar, okay? And you have some health potions, you don't want to die. How do you drink the potions automatically? You can adjust the bot so when your health bar drops below 50%, it automatically consumes a potion, but how? Well, you make the bot watch this pixel and if this pixel is no longer red, which means it, it doesn't have health, this means your health is below 50%. And you can make uh, the bot drink the potion on its own. Before we go into mod menus, um, I'd like to tell you to subscribe please if you're enjoying this video so far. You can always unsubscribe later, so now let's move into mod menus. These are the cheat engines of the gaming world. They allow players to activate cheats that go beyond the standard game rules. You've probably seen it. You shoot someone and he doesn't die no matter what. No matter how many shots you shot at him. Or maybe they're zooming across the map at light speed. That's mod menus in action. Mod menus are just some cheats gathered together in a form of a menu that you can enable at any time. But here's the catch, once a player starts using mods, it's no longer about the skill, the game becomes a playground for cheaters and it's not fun anymore. And then we have network hacks, perhaps the most dangerous of them all. These don't just affect your character or game, they manipulate the entire flow of data between players and servers. One of the most infamous network hacks is the lag switch. Imagine you are in the middle of a heated match about to claim the victory and suddenly, boom, the game settles. You freeze and in a flash, your opponent appears behind you. What happened? They hit the lag switch. By disturbing their own connection, they created lag, causing delays in the game's data flow, giving them an unfair advantage. In any online game, the information of the player is stored on a server. When you open the game, it needs to know like how many gems you have, so it asks the server. The server then tells it how many you have. Let's say you want to try and buy a character, but you, you don't have enough gems. So you go, do some memory hacks, and uh, change the amount of gems you have on your client. If the developer has common sense, they will check if the value on the server is the same as the value on the client. If it's true, it will give you what you ordered, otherwise it won't. When you open a shop and you want to buy two potions for 10 gems, okay, you, you have only 10 gems. You send the information to the server, but instead of sending two potions for 10 gems, you just simply add a zero, or two zeros. So you get 200 potions for 10 gems. If the server doesn't check, it will simply give you the, the potions and boom, you have an advantage over others. But why? Why do people cheat in games? Some do it for the thrill, the idea of being untouchable, unbeatable. It's a power trip. 
Cheating offers an easy way to level the playing field or, or more accurately tilt it in their behavior. In our next video we're going behind the curtain to see the most advanced anti-cheat systems, how they are built and how developers are waging the war on the cheat creators. So hit that subscribe button because you really don't want to miss that. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.